we're pleased to re-record uh, the presentation that we did last night so that um, folks can watch the entirety. We want to thank Roger and Sarah for giving us this opportunity to talk about Junction Fiber Mill. In a moment, I'm going to uh, explain how Amanda and I met and uh, then a little bit about sheet. And then Amanda's going to talk about uh, the mill that we're about to open up. So um, let's get going. And at the end, you'll hear some of the questions that we had. I met Amanda early in the summer of 2019 at my booth at the Norwich Farmers Market when she brought when she bought yarn made from the wool of our sheep. A few months later, she stopped at my booth, showed me her finished sweater, and we began talking about sheep and fiber. We've been talking ever since. Amanda and her husband Cody have been great friends and we've relied on them mightily for help with all things sheep and wool. But let me back up. My husband Todd and I moved here almost 12 years ago from the Chicago area because I used to always talk about wanting to start a sheep farm and really had no idea what I was talking about. We're up on Jericho Road in White River Junction in a truly bucolic setting. In the beginning, sheep farmers with years of experience were generous with their time and expertise and helped us learn the ropes about animal care, breeding, and lambing. Right now, we have 30 sheep and we're breeding 16 ewes. They tend to have twins, so we'll likely have about 25 to 30 lambs in early April. There are a lot of breeds of sheep in Vermont, each with their own characteristics. We're raising colored Corydale sheep with a focus on color. Both our rams are colored and that helps ensure we have more color as white is the dominant gene. If we had a white ram, we'd have a ton of white lambs. Corydale fleece is known for being very soft to the touch with a lot of springy bounce. And that's because there is a tight uniform crimp or zigzag across the individual fibers. And when it's processed into yarn, that crimp holds itself in the fiber and makes the yarn very spongy. Sheep are pretty easy to care for. They need fresh water, quality grass and hay, and access to a mineral mix that includes, among other things, salt, and most importantly, selenium. They do, not need to, they do need to have their hooves trimmed four times a year. And the biggest threat to sheep are parasites in their guts. And there are a limited number of drugs to combat the issue. So sheep farmers manage the problem with a combination of selective deworming with an oral drug and regularly moving the flock onto fresh pasture. Once the grass is finished for the season, we switch to hay. And for every sheep we have, we need to have a reserved four pounds of hay per day for 180 days. That's 720 pounds per hungry mouth. And when we do move to hay, we put jackets on every sheep. The jacket is to keep the fleece as clean of hay as possible. Sheep's wool is covered in lanolin. That's what, really what keeps sheep warm in the winter. And too much grass stuck to the lanolin soaked wool will ruin the fleece. It's a complete pain in the butt to outfit them with jackets. And as the wool grows, you need to check and put bigger jackets on. Otherwise the jacket will rub the tips of the wool and cause it to felt, but it is truly worth it. About three weeks before lambing starts, the jackets come off and we have the supremely talented Gwen Hinman over to the farm to shear the sheep. And as the fleece falls away, you can see the colors up close and it's just stunning. Gwen can trim the hooves, inject a cat vaccine, and shear the animal in under seven minutes. And she does about 10,000 sheep a year. Once the fleece has been removed, it's tossed on a table where your fiber friends help pick away the grungy parts in a process called skirting. And it usually only takes a few minutes. Once skirted, the individual fleece is rolled up, put in a plastic bag, and weighed. Last year, we had 250 pounds of raw wool and it's right now ready for the mill. Commercial wool mills were big business throughout New England, but the kind of mills sheep farmers today work with are small custom processing mills, and there aren't very many. One of the very best, Hampton Fiber Mill in Richmond, Vermont, stopped doing custom processing in 2017. When Amanda and I began to talk about starting a mill, we took a long shot and approached Michael Hampton to see if he'd consider selling his mill. We went up for a visit, and left with a handshake agreement to purchase the mill and critical to our decision was Michael's willingness to train us. And now Amanda's gonna tell you what we bought. Thanks Peggy. So I'm gonna talk about what happens when those bags of wool arrive at our mill um, by the farmers and uh, how we turn that raw wool into finished uh, wool products such as roving, bats or yarn. 
The first step to uh, processing wool is to get it clean. Um, so the first step of cleaning the wool is washing it in a process that we call scouring. Scouring is taking uh, the raw wool and putting it into sinks with very hot water. Ours gets up to 185 degrees with some detergent, which will enable the lanolin or the grease from the sheep's wool to melt away, um, taking with it a lot of the dirt and any salts on the animal. Um, we, what we do is we put it in a wash sink and we probably do that process twice. And then we go through um, enough rinse cycles, two or three, so that the water runs clear in the end. You don't want, uh, the reason for washing the wool is that while lanolin is a really useful thing for the animal and it's something that you'll find in a lot of your lotions and lip balms, um, it's not something that we want gunking up our machines and it's certainly not something you want in your yarn in the end. Um, so after uh, we scour it, we spin out all of the excess moisture and then we put the wool on racks to dry overnight. Uh, the trick is getting the wool to the correct uh, humidity level because if it's too dry, you end up with wool all over the place because of static. Um, so usually we'll just dry it overnight with some fans on it. And the next step is bringing the wool to the picker. So what the picker does, um, it's, it's twofold purpose, is to pick apart the locks and open them up in preparation for carding as well as beating out the vegetation. So it also offers a little bit of cleaning in this process as well. Um, some fleeces come to the mill with uh, quite a lot of vegetation in them. And so it might not be possible for us to process them, which is why some farmers choose to jacket their animals, though it's, it's not totally necessary depending on your farm situation. Um, so what happens when, uh, as you can see in this video, Peggy puts the washed wool on the belt and it feeds it into this big wooden drum covered in um, extremely sharp and big spikes that's spinning at a very fast rate. So that's beating out the vegetation and starting to pick apart those locks. Then it travels up, um, as you can see in the photo in the bottom left, up through the metal, um, metal piece into the top part, which adds air and it, it turns again once around to add more fluff and then falls down into this basket, kind of like little pieces of woolly cotton candy. Um, the picker is also used for blending. So if our customers want to blend multiple different colors of their wool together, or um, perhaps blending in different fibers like silk or nylon, this can be done in this stage as well. The next step is the carter. So we feed the picked wool onto a belt that slowly feeds it into this uh, machine, which is a series of toothed rollers that starts to align the fibers together um, and gets it um, more blended and even. And it comes off of the other end of this in a, um, in a, in a thing called roving. So roving is this sort of rope of fibers that have been sort of started to be combed together. And um, we can also add an attachment to this machine, which will produce bats. Um, bats are used by quilters or felters, um, and they're basically sheets on a roll um, of this like thin gauzy wool fiber. Roving uh, can be used in this stage by hand spinners. So people who choose to spin their yarn um, at home on a spinning wheel as um, many people in this area do. Um, but what we, we do from here, we have, to, we have to put it through an additional process to get it ready for our um, mechanized spinner. So this is the carter. The next step is the pin drafter. So we take that coiled roving and we separate it into many piles, usually six or eight different piles. And what the purpose of this machine is to take those separate pieces of um, separate strands of roving and to even them out and pull the fibers um, apart even more in a process called drafting. So what ends up coming out of this machine is a very consistent form of roving um, where the fibers are even more aligned than they were on the carter. And it ends up in another coil like you saw in the previous slide. And how it does this is it goes through the pin drafter in what looks like these combs you can see in the photo on the slide in the bottom left that are called faller bars. And these rotate in an infinite loop and pull and stretch these fibers apart. So you can see it going into the machine as a, a thicker strand of six different um, pieces of roving and it comes out in this one 
evened out um, strand. And not only do we run it through this machine once, which makes a huge difference to the quality of the roving, we'll put it through um, two or more times until we really see that it's very even because without even roving, we can't get even and consistent yarn, which is what we want. The next step is the spinner. So what is in the picture in the bottom left on this slide is a bobbin full of plied yarn. So I'll explain how it gets to that. Um, so we, we put these piles of roving behind the machine and it, they get slowly fed in. And you can see these top rollers here add some additional draft or further pulling apart of the fibers. And then after those first set of rollers, it goes to be twisted. So when you have the roving in your fingers, it's very easy to pull apart the strands of fiber. They're not strongly connected yet, and it's not a very useful thing if you want to make a sweater, say. So adding the twist to those fibers is what gives it strength and makes it quite a useful um, substance. And so once it adds, gets the twist, it's then spun onto the bobbins. And then you'll have a bobbin full of what's called a single. So a single is a single strand of twisted yarn. And that's useful for things like weaving, but most people will want to have um, multiple plies on their yarn. So we can actually take those multiple um, bobbins, so two or four bobbins, say, and run them through the spinner, putting the twist in the reverse direction to ply them together so that you have one strand with multiple, made up of multiple strands of um, single spun yarn. From there, we're just about done. Um, we need to get it off the bobbins um, into what's called a skein. So you can see that in the photo of Peggy and I here. A skein is a unit of yarn that corresponds to um, a desired length, a total length of yarn. And it is put into this uh, bundled loop. And so how we do that is using this device called a skein winder. So we set the bobbins on the ground behind the machine and we configure it to say 200 yards or whatever we want, excuse me. And then we press start and the whole, um, the wooden bars take the tail end of the bobbin and they start to rotate it around. And when it hits that desired length, the machine stops. And then we can release the tension on those bars so that we can pull off the skeins. And you'll see, um, it'll look something like what Peggy and I are holding there. And then you're pretty much done. Um, the finishing touches are, um, we will always rinse our um, skeins in some hot water and leave them to dry. And what that does is it fluffs up the fibers um, from the whole processing. They get a little bit tight. So this will set the twist, fluff it up and make it look nice and pretty to put your fingers into. Um, what some people will want to do is take their skeins and dye them. Um, so we'll just hand them back the skeins and then they can go right in the dye pot. Here, um, this is a photo of the same yarn from the previous slide that I have dyed with some marigold flowers, which is a hobby of mine doing natural dye. Um, as a mill at the beginning, we're not going to be offering dyeing services um, because a lot of our customers will want to do that themselves or um, they'll want the natural colors. But in the future, it might be something that we'll offer. And certainly, we're hoping to offer classes in, in how to do that sort of thing. And then the last step to make it look like um, what you see here, this sort of twisted bundle of yarn, it's called a hank. So we'll just twist them into this figure eight twist. And this is what will end up on the shelves at uh, places like Norwich Knits or your local uh, yarn store. So now that I'm done talking through the process of getting the raw wool into yarn, roving or bats, um, just wanted to give you an update on where we're at as Junction Fiber Mill. So we've been looking all over for the perfect space to put our mill. And we finally found this amazing space in White River Junction, Vermont um, at 101 Maple Street. So this is our building where we couldn't be more excited to move in. And many of you will recognize this as one of the former Kibbe buildings. Um, a few weeks ago, this is what it looked like on the inside. This is where all of the equipment will go. And there was a lot of work and construction to be done. You can see sort of the spray painted um, bits on the ground and the taped out marks of where all the equipment will go. And we are super excited to announce that as of three days ago, all of our equipment has been safely put into place. And um, just yesterday, the electricians came and wired everything up. So Peggy and I are really excited to get started making yarn here in White River Junction, Vermont. 
Um, we still need to spend a lot of time getting to know our machinery. And so Peggy has acquired probably 400 pounds of raw wool that we're gonna be running through the processes, learning all we can so that we are ready, ready when, when we start taking orders to process your hard, um, your hard earned wool into the best possible finished product. So with that, right now, our current plan is to start taking orders for roving April 1st and then to open it up to yarn orders in May 1st. But you can go to our website, junctionfibermill.com and sign up for our newsletter for all of the latest news. So with that, uh, I'll end on a picture of Peggy and I. We're really excited to be mill owners and to be um, joining this awesome community here. And um, we're looking forward to making some yarn for you all. So I will stop sharing and let's see, we'll hand it back over to Lily for the questions. <laughs>